Uh, thank you, Bula uh, Vinak, and good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have uh, two uh, topics that I'll be talking, I understand, on. Uh, but the first one, obviously, is about improving internal revenue generation capabilities in ACP states. And what I'd like to uh, talk to you about this morning is essentially share the Fijian experience in respect of the uh, revenue generation in Fiji, in particular over the past three to four years, and what the focus has been on. As you know, we have, by way of background, uh, gone through a constitutional and political and indeed a legal transformation uh, over the past three or four years. But during that period and prior to that, there has been an enormous uh, focus on um, infrastructure development in Fiji. But of course, with any infrastructure development, you need to have the revenue base to be able to back that type of infrastructure development. In a period where it was probably not the, the, the trend, we actually went for the opposite direction and that is that we focus on, in particular following the uh, GFC, a uh, consumption-led growth. And the consumption-led growth that uh, took place in Fiji fundamentally came from a very substantial reduction in the taxation regime in Fiji. So we had, for example, corporate tax uh, used to be about 33%. Today, corporate tax rate in Fiji is 20%. If you're listed on the South Pacific Stock Exchange, which is the, you know, the second uh, stock exchange in the Pacific, there's one in the Papua New Guinea, there's one in Fiji. If you're listed on the South Pacific Stock Exchange, you pay a corporate tax rate of 10%. If you set up a regional or global head office in Fiji, uh, you pay a corporate tax rate of 17%. The individual taxation rate uh, used to start off, the taxation th uh, threshold was $8,500, Fijian dollars. So if you earned anything more than that a year, you had to start paying tax at the rate of 15%. Today, the personal income taxation threshold is $16,000. It's almost doubled. And rather than paying uh, from the starting rate of 15%, you now pay 7%. Maximum taxation payable by an individual in Fiji now is 20%. So it's in line with the corporate tax rate. However, there is a slight exception. If you earn more than 275,000 Fijian dollars a year on an individual basis, any amount over the $275,000 is a small levy of 1.5%. Which is not that much. That essentially, ladies and gentlemen, led to the consumption-led growth. And that, of course, now has led to an investment-led growth. We now have an unprecedented uh, investment levels in Fiji for the past three years of 25% of GDP. Of that 25%, 15% of the 25% is, in fact, led by the private sector. So there has been, from that very fundamental basis, a, a, a major shift in the taxation regime. What we also did was we focus on, on the other end, on the small uh, to medium-sized businesses or microfinance businesses. So this year, in particular in the next two weeks, we'll see, as announced in our budget last year, we are giving a $1,000 cash grant, just by way of an example, to people who are already in small micro-businesses. So you may see, for example, people who may be selling cut pineapple pieces or watermelon pieces or selling fish by the roadside, they'll be eligible for a $1,000 grant to perhaps fix up the cabinet in which they are selling those pineapples in, to fix up the stall from which they're selling the fish from. And that is a $1,000 grant which leads to that investment and that confidence in the economy. I must say that what we have found with the reduction of the taxation regime overall there's much greater compliance. So there's no sort of less cooking of the books. I'm not saying that has stopped completely. Uh, there's no creative accounting or less creative accounting now because the approach is, well, if the corporate tax is 20%, you might as well pay it rather than paying the accountant, you know, X amount of dollars to do some creative accounting. 
So compliance has increased as a result of which, as a result of which, revenue has in fact increased in terms of collection. As a result of the consumption-led growth, we now collect greater amounts of VAT. We have at the same time, as I was saying, uh, dealing with microfinances, we have also in respect to small to medium enterprise, what we found traditionally, the banks in Fiji uh, have been uh, generally very conservative. Uh, so their uh, willingness to double into the small to microfinance or medium enterprise is somewhat limited. So government has, through the Reserve Bank of Fiji, given a grant by way of a guarantee to help medium-sized and small to medium-sized businesses. I'll give you an example of that. So if I, for example, am a hairdresser, and I'm in a suburb, and I have two chairs. I'm a barber shop, I have a barber shop, even as a ladies' hairdressing salon. I'm getting more customers, I need to put in another additional chair, mirrors and extension, it may cost me $30,000. I have the revenue base, I may not necessarily have the contribution that banks normally require in terms of my contribution to get the $30,000 loan. That's where this guarantee comes into play. So I can go to a commercial bank, I can show my cash flow, I can show that there's a need for another chair, and I can show that I have a certain level of customer um, inflow and indeed capacity to take more. If the bank assesses that you have the ability to repay the loans, they will then be able to use this guarantee that's given by the Reserve Bank of Fiji, funded by the government of Fiji. So that's how we managed to progress many of these small to medium enterprises to move up to the next stage and indeed become part of the mainstream uh, financial institutions. We have also, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, given the Fiji's uh, position in the, in the Pacific, and you may have heard, for example, earlier on this morning about uh, regional integration, and there's no greater way of regional integration than through trade. And taking advantage, for example, of the Melanesian trade agreement that may have been discussed this morning, we have, in, in, for the past few years, have a grant that's available. It's called the NES, or National Export Strategy. So I may be, for example, exporting dalo, it's a particular root crop, uh, to Australia and New Zealand, or I may be exporting popos to Australia and New Zealand. There are certain quarantine requirements that you need to meet as far as Australia and New Zealand is concerned, and I may not have the necessary facility. I may not necessarily have the cooler that goes below a particular level, freezing level or cooling level that is required by the quarantine authorities in Australia. So that's where the national export strategy comes in. And what we've done over the past number of years, it's a very transparent process, and as we've seen, and I will highlight in the, in the second paper, that when you have transparency in all of these processes, in fact, it leads to a lot of confidence. So there's an open, transparent process in which you apply for the NES. So you may have the funding to be able to, uh, or you may, sorry, have the desire to set up a $100,000 cooling system, but you have only $20,000. NES comes in and provides the top up. So by providing the top up, I am then able to get the cooler be able to meet the compliance requirements of the Australian and New Zealand authorities or the American authorities, and I'm off and running. It's a grant. It's not a loan, but you need to meet, meet certain um, uh, requirements as set out under the application forms. So that we have seen, in fact, has led to a lot of uh, job growth. We have seen an increase in the quality of the products that Fiji is now exporting. Linked to that, about four years ago, we launched the, what we call the Buy Fijian, Fijian-made product campaign. Uh, you may see over here, in front, you have this handicraft, traditional handicraft that's displayed. You'll see on it a logo. It says Fijian Crafted. Now, that handicraft is actually certified. We had, for example, in the tourism industry, the tourism contributes uh, approximately 33 to 35% towards our GDP. And some of the challenges that some of the Pacific Island countries have, and indeed I'm sure some of the challenges in the Caribbean, is that whilst you may have an influx of tourists coming to the country, the trick is to, main, 
to ensure that there's a higher retention of the dollar spent in the country. So if, for example, every dollar that's spent, obviously a certain percentage goes towards the hotels. If the hotels are foreign owned, obviously those funds get repatriated. If your food stock, if your agricultural produce comes from overseas, that is further eroded. In the same way we found, for example, a few years ago, many of the handicraft stores in Fiji, where you may buy certain uh, wooden artifacts, you may buy shells that you wear around your necks, necklaces, were in fact coming from China and Philippines. So an unassuming tourist would walk into the handicraft store and think, it's, oh, it's wonderful shells from Fiji. But in fact, it's from, probably from Philippines or China. So what we did as part of the Buy Fijian and Fijian uh, uh, product campaign, we certified eight different categories of products. So we have Fijian made, Fijian grown, Fijian processed, Fijian sewn, Fijian manufactured, a number of these products. So obviously there are certain products that is 100% Fijian, authentic product. This pottery here is made by probably a Fijian lady using Fijian clay, Fijian labor of course, but there may be certain materials where it is in fact Fijian processed or Fijian packaged. So some countries now, for example, are bringing in bulk, say, soap, and then what they do is cut it up into small packaged pieces, and then it's Fijian, uh, Fijian packed. So we've identified that you need to go through a particular certification process, and therefore you have the authenticity that is required. So I urge you, if you're buying any Fijian uh, products or handicraft, Go into the shops and look for that particular label. It must say Fijian crafted. So you are then actually giving the dollar directly to a Fijian person. One of the tricks, of course, is, and I think many countries do face this, that when you do develop products, or you may have, for example, you have overseas uh, 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 development partners coming in. We've had, for example, you know, Indonesia. There's a lot of work that's been done with Indonesia in terms of value adding to products. Uh, you know, so, for example, seaweed, you know, you can make drinks out of it, you can get various products out of it. And that's great. You can have workshops, people get to know about it. But at the end of the day, you need to connect them to the markets. They need to have a market, whether locally or whether externally. And that has been one of the tricks of this. So we've got major retail outlets that have had a buy-in to the Fijian crafted uh, products. So you can go there specifically and they'll have a section which has Fijian crafted products. In the same way, um, it does authenticate quality and consistency of the product. So that's part and parcel of the uh, certification process. Ladies and gentlemen, I think the other point that I'd like to uh, talk about, of course, is the, the, the fact that uh, we have overall uh, created an environment where the processes that have been put in place by government uh, need to be a lot more streamlined. We are not 100% there. We are working towards it. And I think that also leads to the revenue generation. That also leads to a confidence in the system, in the processes, and therefore it increases your capacity to be able to increase your revenue. Our, our structure is very different, you know, compared to some other countries, as, as I've said. We have gone by way of having a lower tax base as far as corporate taxation is concerned as far as uh, personal income tax rates are concerned. We are focusing more in terms of volume-based uh, economy. We are focused more on attracting foreign investment based on quality, based on adherence to environmental laws. As you would have heard the Prime Minister talk about the, uh, the green growth framework. And while sometimes the process may be a bit slow, it may not necessarily give you the immediate returns but for the long term, sustainability is a lot better to be in that space. So there are many countries in the Pacific, in the Caribbean, in Asia, that are competing for the tourist dollar. But if you are able to distinguish your product from the others by way of, for example, adherence to green growth, sustainable um, uh, framework, if you are able to have better adherence to uh, labor standards, if you're able to have better standards of adherence, for example, in terms of civil aviation coming into Fiji and infrastructure, then obviously that sets you apart. And I think that is really fundamentally
how we are trying to position Fiji at the moment. So um, essentially, ladies and gentlemen, in, in, in a nutshell, um, that is, is the focus in terms of the Fijian economy, is to give uh, confidence uh, not just to the consumers, but also in terms of having a long-term goal in terms of setting your products apart uh, from, uh, from other jurisdictions. And I'm quite happy to uh, take questions. Naka, thank you.